welcome to California. You know, it is a pleasure to welcome Netroots Nation here to California, to my home state. I live in Los Angeles, where we just passed legislation to ban the plastic bags. And I'm really excited to be here with you. And I know that speakers always say that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually am really excited to be here with you. Because last year, when Netroots Nation was going on, I was tweeting with some of you who were here, and I was at home studying for the bar exam. The only thing that California does worse than every state in the country. And I remember thinking two things about if I failed the bar. The first one was, oh no, what Fox News is going to say about me is going to make Rush Limbaugh look like nothing if I fail the bar exam. And the second was, if I fail, I'm not going to be at Netroots Nation again next year. I'm going to be here studying again. So I'm really glad to be here with all of you. And I did end up passing our California bar exam. Thank you. It's what I consider to be the great victory of 2012. But some of the rest of you may still be feeling the warm glow of a few other great victories of 2012. Maybe something like four pro-marriage equality votes in 2012. <laughs> Setting off a wave of states since then. Several states and municipalities and measures condemning that wolf in sheep's clothing, pro-corporate decision wrapped in our First Amendment, Citizens United. And even in red states like Idaho and South Dakota, decisions for labor, for teachers specifically, defending and supporting teacher rights. And there were four states that took action to enact sensible drug policy, to stop locking away discriminatorily so many members of our communities of color. But here in California, I think we got the holy governance grail. We enacted Prop 30. We, we had the electorate here in California stand up and self-impose increased taxes in order to pay for our progressive values, to pay for the education we believe in. And there were a few progressive leaders that we put into positions of power in 2012. Senator Warren comes to mind. If you haven't checked her out on the banking committee yet, I would, I would really recommend it. It's some pretty good must-see TV. That's, that's rare for C-SPAN, but that's some must-see TV. We also elected the first openly gay US Senator, Tammy Baldwin. And the first Buddhist to the Senate, Maisie Hirono. We sent the first Hindu member of Congress to DC, Tulsi Gabbard. I guess, I guess those are all women, but you know, come to think of it, women did pretty well in 2012. We elected a record-breaking 20% of women, 20% women in the Senate. And in the House of Representatives, for the first time ever, the Democratic caucus is not made up primarily majority straight white men. And some guy who was on a video taking up my speech time got reelected based on a vision that when we fight for economic equality in this country, we fight for the economic success of everyone, that we should all share in that prosperity. Now, we sent strong messages with those ballots. And the powers that be, they noticed who 
cast those ballots. We cast those ballots. We, the rising pro-equality progressive coalition in this country, LGBT voters, young voters, communities of color, and many, many very angry women cast those ballots. And post-November 6th, there was chatter. The pundits were talking. The coalition held together. 2008 wasn't a blip. They're a force to be reckoned with. And some people, some people better get on board with immigration reform. And some people better stop talking about rape. Because the electorate, the electorate is a changing. And we're still feeling pretty good about that, right? Yeah? Well, 2012 is over. And 2014 is coming, folks. Because if we fail to repeat what we accomplished in 2012, if we fail to have that big progressive turnout and those solid victories, then, and you'll pardon the pun, they'll say that 2012 was a fluke. Come on, with a name like that, there's like very little I can do with it. That's like the one thing. But seriously, they'll say that 2012 was a blip, was a fluke, that it was all about Obama and his skills as a politician, and that it has nothing to do with what this country wants for itself, what we want for this country, the progressive vision that we know that a country that we love deserves. And then the politicians can go ahead and ignore the need for that kind of progressive change that we're fighting for. But we can't allow that to happen. Not on my generation's watch. Not on our generation's watch. Because right now, we have a window. We have an opportunity. And when we have an opportunity, we have a responsibility. That's how I looked at what strange circumstances I found myself in in early 2012 was that, all right, I could, I could go away from this and, and just deal, but I have a microphone and that means I have an opportunity to talk about the values and the vision that we as progressives hold dear and to say some important things and stand up for what we want for this country. And when I had that kind of opportunity, I thought I had a responsibility to do it. And I think every one of us, <laughs> it wasn't me alone, you know very well. And every one of us in this room has that same kind of opportunity right now. And that means we all have that same responsibility to spend every moment working to show that the messages we sent in 2012 are here to stay, that this progressive pro-equality electorate is here to stay. We do that not only because we have a responsibility to the generations that came before us, to our parents and our grandparents' generations that fought for the civil rights victories that are under attack, that fought for the women's rights victories that are under attack, but yes, and I know it's cheesy, but it's true. We do it because we have a responsibility to the generations that will come after us, who will build on what we accomplish or will clean up our mess. And this isn't, this isn't just a rallying cry to leave here and to get to work for your favorite candidates, the candidates you believe in, because I know you're thinking, oh, girlfriend didn't notice it's 2013, it's not an election year. But I did, actually. I know that we heard from amazing speakers like Governor Dean and like Representative Frank tonight, but I do notice they're not on the ballot. I did notice what year it is. But the election is coming soon, so we do have to get to work for our progressive champions. But that's not all that this is about. And this isn't just about how we need to organize like nobody's business to register voters every day. But that's true as well. I've been working with some consultants recently to take a look at the membership lists for all of our organizations. And folks, the, the worst nightmare of 
new media organizers is true in certain respects. All those people who are signing our petitions and tweeting for us, they're not voting as much as we need them to. So we do have to register those voters and get out the vote. But this is bigger than that. This is about working every day to make sure that we deliver on what we promised in 2012. That means helping the champions that we elected. And when I say help, I mean helping them toward the right solution when they need a little bit of incentive. That's included. Helping them to make sure that we're delivering on what we promised the American people. Because voters are fickle. We know this. And if we don't deliver real, true, progressive change, then cynicism will rule. And they'll decide that you know, the progressives, the liberals, the conservatives, they're all the same. None of them can really deliver change in my daily life. But we know that that isn't true. We know that the policies that we believe in and we fight in can lift our brothers and sisters out of poverty. We know that the policies that we fight for can deliver legal and social equality for every community in this country. Si se puede, darn it. And because we really do believe that we can make that change happen, believe with every protesting, civil disobeying, legislating, lobbying, community organizing, tweeting, and oh my word, petition signing bone of our bodies, we believe we can deliver that change. then now is the time to put some muscle into those beliefs, to spend every moment making sure that it happens, fighting for these policies, delivering comprehensive immigration reform, making sure that we go further than the Supreme Court is going to, and we actually repeal all of DOMA, not just one section. and demonstrating that reproductive rights in this country go in more than one direction. They go forward, too. Because before we know it, we're going to be in Detroit. It's going to be Netroots Nation 2014, and the election 2014 will be here as well. Thank you so very much.